Truly one of the best nations to be playing Toll as in EU4 is Florence. I mean, we're in 1499 and we already have 49 ducats on the plus with just a few provinces in northern Italy whilst fielding 40,000 units, give or take, with more on the way as we speak because I'm uh, recruiting more units. But today I want to show you guys how you can min-max the schnapps out of playing Toll as Florence. We're going to take all of the Italian land we also have the Byzantines as our vassals and we are directly owning the province of Negropont which allows for further expansion around the realms including the island of Corsica as ours. If you're curious how we got to this point you'll have a link to the first part of this campaign in the description below. So now before anything else let's actually attack Naples since Naples despite being allied to the French are not getting helped by the French since the French are malevolent so that means we can easily take a massive chunk of the Italian Peninsula, I'm gonna take all of the provinces that are essentially a part of my main trade node, the Genoese trade node, since we really want to get a hold of the majority of this node. Obviously, I also control majority of the Venetian trade node since I have the city of Venice that has 40 trade power by itself here, but I want to get a bigger chunk of the Genoese node. I'm actually in the process of recruiting some more units, so I'm gonna keep my armies there for the time being. I'm not just yet attacking. So, first and foremost, guys, every single province I have in the the Italian Peninsula has a workshop built, it has a barracks built which boosted up my manpower to 60,000 and my economy to well this much. Similar thing is uh, we have a marketplace in all the provinces that actually increase our trade power by quite a little bit. Not all the provinces, the other provinces where we did not build this in, we built other buildings in, such as the courthouse which lowers the governing cost for provinces as well as the state maintenance and it lowers the autonomy so it is overall one of the best buildings to have in all of your provinces of course you also want to have your manufactories built and later on your soldiers households and so on we'll go through that as we go along in this campaign because this is going to be a little bit of a longer campaign where i get to show everything that i need to show about a playing toll campaign in general truce with milan over um do you know what i don't mind attacking them i have their transferring trade power can you just cancel trade power please so i can attack you thank you very much milan i also like how Kurt Croatia basically migrated to the Bosnian land and Austria just took over all of Croatia. Also, in case you're wondering, we are still a part of the empire. We decided to remain in the empire, which in turn means uh, we benefit from the uh, reforms of the empire that lower our dev cost and from the protection of the emperor with whom we are allied for the time being. Oh, I forgot to attack the Milanese. Let's go. Croatia, I'm going to cobaladrate you boys. And that is it. Oh, wow. Milan fell super fast let's go over to brigands in that case looks like we need to build a flagship also so let's do that right now i'm actually gonna build it not in uh there i'm gonna build it here since that one already has something queued up it's gonna be a light ship i don't really need a heavy ship in the mediterranean to be fair trade power per ship and fleet plus one is a massive guys because if i have 50 ships i get an extra 50 trade power from those 50 ships wherever i assign this fleet fleet engagement with is amazing for combat fleet movement Movement speed is great also and it also benefits trade for that matter and fleet privateering efficiency is great too. So I'm not going of course for the uh, fleet engagement with because I don't want to have a uh, combat fleet let's say. I'm mainly doing this for strategic economic reasons let's call them. The siege of Hum is over boys. That's right we've taken the Buddhist capital of Hum. Okay that's a bad joke I'll stop. So I'm not going to make them a vassal. I was initially going to do so but I realized I also have have Bosnia as a vassal <laughs> so then it's redundant having two vassals in the exact same spot instead I'm just gonna cancel their alliances and stuff and kill them off later with my uh, reconquest of core CB from Bosnia considering how really high development the northern provinces are by just taking four provinces from uh, Milan I already get a massive coalition of most of the nations in south uh, Germany but you know what I don't give a schnapps so I'm just taking all this uh, schnipple to duple to do for myself and I'm coring it all up because it's a rightful Florentine land. Everybody knows this. This is the ultimate truth in the Italian peninsulas. I don't know how I'm going to deal with uh, Naples now since taking all of this is going to mean 
a massive coalition but you know what we'll turn this video in both a playing toll video as well as how to handle coalitions video there you go see problem solved guys you just got to be innovative with your ideas all right that's what's happening here oh no they actually have started joining in a coalition against me oh lord this is not garon <laughs> let's actually improve relations with the outrage nations in that case so so get this a booyah noki we got 70 percent innovativeness boys by the way if you want the save game both the first part and this second part are available on my patreon page and this is an iron man game with achievements there you go no schnicker de boobadoos happening here okay you can enjoy the save game for yourself all right i think it's also a great time to start our golden era actually since that's gonna make it a lot cheaper to get all of the power cost 10% cheaper to be more exact that means 10% cheaper to get ideas 10% cheaper to get techs and a lot of other benefits essentially developing is 10% cheaper and let's assign a second diplomat to outrage countries oh look at that Crete just broke away from the knights I'm gonna attack the Cretans right now they got no units right now so I'm just gonna send some ships there let's take them out the great part is that once we have Crete we can attack the uh, Mameluks whenever we want to since we have the adjacent sea tile in the Gulf of Bomb which means that we can attack well we can get claims and attack the mameluks afterwards oh that's cute they hired the free company man oh now i feel bad for killing you guys no i don't I'm, I'm just kidding i really don't oh what's happening here ottomans getting ottoman noble rebel problems hmm looks to me like a good time to actually attack the ottomans in that case and finally i can also get military access through the uh papal states they were not giving me before because i had outraged relations with them well they had outraged relations with me all right boys Let's start marching into the uh, lands of uh, Nepals. And it looks like Crete is also done. So let's uh, fully annex them. Sounds to me like we got some Cretans amongst us now, boys. Let's wait for them to get movement lock and attack them in Terracin. Oh, wow. Okay. That's uh, a very unfortunate uh, <laughs> zone of control situation. Fair enough. Hot diggity dong. Oh, I think I only got half of them. Very smart, Naples. Extremely smart attacking my vassal Trent here. That's just the most gist brain thing you've ever done, isn't it? And let's take care of the Milanese separatistos as well as the other separatistos over here. Booyah noki. A noble plot! Oh dear, that is that is not good. That is really not good. Uh, let's see where colonialism has spawned. Spawned in Cadiz. All right, that's cool. Oh, no, it's not cool because these guys are rivals. Oh, schnapple -doo. They're my rival because they have Aragon and I want Aragon's Italian holdings. I remember now. Hey, where do you think you're going, sir? Don't you know this is not allowed? The last of the Neapolitans, similar to the last of the Mohicans, except European and very much so pizza loving. Oh, my lord. The third reform is done also. So that means we got state maintenance minus 25%. That is really great. Now, the big decision is, what do we do? I think I'm only taking the eastern part, I mean, western part, and I'm taking a little bit of cash as well, and I'll take the rest of this in the next war against them. This seems fairly okay to me. Coalition, definitely a few extra nations in that potential coalition, but hey, you know what? This game without a coalition would not be a proper game, would it, boys? We all know that you come here and watch these looty videos for the coalition wars. Admit got schnapple -doo. Imagine this, guys. The province of Luka is 20 divisions development and it only cost me five mana points to continue to develop this it's already been improved six times it's been developed six times this is just massive pepe got i'm actually going to exploit the tax dev here to get it up to 25 you know what i'm going to get every single province up to 25 actually that's going to be my short-term goal also going to have to figure out how i'm going to fight the coalition because it now is going to be including a france most likely oh no look at all these nations joining the coalition and against the moi oh whatever will i do against all these horrible OPMs. I'm gonna kill them. That's what I'm gonna do. Oh, lol. We can support the independence of Sweden. Sweden still has not gotten its independence. It is supported by Poland and Novgorod. Wait, what? Grod's still alive? <laughs> <laughs> They're allied to Lithuania. Oh, okay. I see Poland did not get the personal union over Lithuania. That makes a big difference. Yeah. All right. Well, whatever. I'm not going to get any alliance with those boys. I am going to, however, get an alliance with the English because England has a rival that I also rival France. We, we both don't like the French. It all traces down back to that day when we went on a vacation to France and we had those snails. We hate those snails. 
We hate them so much, we rival the French. Oh no, Corfu just joined in a coalition against me. It's all over, guys. It's all over now. Nothing I can do against the mighty Corfu. You know, the funny part is that uh, Corfu actually has a uh, achievement, if I'm not mistaken. And then other bigger nations, and more important, do not have. Which is weird, okay? Just pointing it out. Let's see if we can actually do something about the Albanians. Make them get out of this coalition. And we're also building a third army to support our two stands armies right now since uh, I have a strong suspicion the coalition might actually trigger and if it does I want to have a good chance of winning it wait what Switzerland did not join in the coalition against me not yet anyway uh, that's a mistake because I'm now gonna attack you Switzerland congratulations you should have followed the rest of the people around us or did you really think you could stay neutral in this world sir I think it's also time that we start uh, improving our great projects here especially the one in Naples is pretty nice because it gives up to a hundred governing capacity as well as prestige and reform progress growth so i'm gonna need all of those things and we're also gonna get 10 percent morale of armies to fight in the next few wars from the pope and even some deploy annexation costs since i'll start integrating some of my subjects soon no pope why dost thou excommunicado me i thought you're my bestest friend wait do i even have good no i have horrible relations with you okay fine i know what you want pope i know why you did this all right i know what's happening here you just wanted a little bit of that sweet Sweet kush kush, didn't you? You wanted some of that uh, chubuk, as they say in Turkey, didn't you, boy? That's what it really comes down to at the end of the day, boys. It's all about paying your church tax. <laughs> Be honest, guys. How many of you know the actual capital of Switzerland? If I ask, half the people in chat are gonna say that it's Zurich, when the reality is that the capital is Berlin, motherfuckers. It's Berlin, okay? It's always been Berlin. You're wrong if you think it's Bern. Let's uh, let's ask them for trade power and all that schnapple de boobble de boo. Cancel alliance with Ulm. Nobody wants to be allied to Ulm, apparently, and let's go back home. I did this because I want the province of Como to do the uh, confront the Lombards mission and then the Adriatic Axis mission. So now we just got to do end the Genoese competition by killing the Genoese. <laughs> also guys, I cannot underline enough how important it is to have the protect trade edict in all of your Italian provinces because this essentially gives you a massive amount of extra trade power, which in turn means you're getting a lot more money from these juicy trade notes here in Genoa and uh, Venice. Holy mother of God, look how fast we're actually integrating Trent here. 14% per month what that is insane man i mean it is a nine development province so it's expected let's face it here burgundy just sent me 53 ducats how very kind of them i mean i don't really need the money but it's the thought that counts and i just realized genoa's got a big chunk of the steps here so it's not gonna be so bad after i kill them off from uh, the italian peninsula they still will survive in other parts of the world granted though uh they are in the coalition against me right now that includes France and other nations. So I will chill for a little while to wait for that coalition to go away. But at the same time, I'm going to be attacking one nation that is not in the coalition. And this way, I'm going to bring some nations that are in the coalition to uh, piece them out without having to fight the entirety of the coalition. Set Ancona as the war target and it's a time for the Versky boys. Fairly quick battle against the uh, papal troopers. I guess uh, it's time to pray less and fight more papal states okay just saying hey we managed to capture a couple of ships from the Pope that's pretty cool of them maybe we'll capture some more after we take Rome here and they got nowhere else to retreat we captured two more so now we have 14 galleys of four of them courtesy of the uh, Papalenstaaten not gonna lie guys I'm actually really really enjoying this campaign and if you are as well and you want to see a third and final part for this that was a weird uh, twang I get the part 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 yeah anyway if you want a third part you need to get me 10,000 likes before before the end of the month. That's how I roll. That's how this whole thing works, okay? If I don't see 10,000 likes, it means you're not interested enough in this. And I'm not gonna waste my time when I have so many beautiful other countries to play as, such as uh, Naxos over here that's dead, okay? That's what I'm talking about, boys. This war actually helped me out so much because I'm getting rid of a lot of these annoying one province miners like uh, the Knights, which despite not being a menace to me, because I'm also Catholic like them, they were definitely a menace in the Mediterranean. 
Gonna do the same to Corfu and Albania for that matter. Now, Venice is a special case because I'm also canceling a lot of the cores that they have on me. Doesn't really help with much, really, because in a multiplayer, this would actually be used against me. In a single player, AI is not gonna release a nation and feed back its cores. Me getting rid of those cores is just an OCD thing that I have. I love getting rid of cores. I want my country to have only my cores. I don't know. Am I the only one like this? Do you guys like to play like that as well? Or is it just me? Let me know in the comments. I'm actually curious. Oh, is it Sack of Zenontes? Oui, oui, mon ami. Holy mother of Portuguese Maghreb. These boys really took it to the next level, didn't they? Kabylia is also alive for some reason. I guess they got released by the Portuguese. And they're getting attacked by Tunis right now. So they're not going to be alive for too much longer. And we're also getting ready for our war against Zemememelux. Let's get the last claim that we can get here. Our troops are pretty much in position. Just going to need to get my uh, ships in position. So that means I got to finish this war first. Taking five provinces from the Pope. Letting them keep Rome for now at least. Little bit of a coalition including Austria this time but they're allied to me so they likely will not um break that alliance hopefully at least i don't know let's see war reparations to a uh, beautiful and uh, let's go ahead and core this stuff as well now starting to look a little bit more like italy aren't we boys here's something that i really like doing before i declare big wars namely i like to provoke my rebellions and fight them and kill them off before the war starts this way when i start my war against the bigger nations that i'm going to be fighting soon i don't need to worry about rebels popping off left and right. I was planning to attack the Mamluks, but then I realized that it's not going to be too much fun. Instead, I'm going to attack the uh, Ottomans, which is definitely a lot more fun since the Ottomans are a bit of a challenge. And right now, the Ottomans have the strongest units in the game. They have the fire damage uh, Jenny series or whatever the hell they're called at Military Tech 9. So it's not going to be easy, but I'm going to still go for it. I'm going to go alone. I'm not going to call in the Austrians, even though I could. And I'm going to try and uh, kick some Ottoman ass. Not try. I will kick some Ottoman ass. Let's make sure we uh, keep the Ottomans away from the Balkans by uh, barraging and taking Constantinople really fast. This way, we have naval supremacy here. We take both of the provinces in Gallipoli and Constantinople so they cannot even pass on over into the Balkans, which means we already got 50% of the war score from taking the Balkan fortifications. At the same time, I'm improving relations with the various nations here in uh, the southern parts of Germany because once I get 50 relations with them they leave the coalition against me that's basically what happened with uh, most of these nations here i improve relations they left the coalition eventually it's going to be only the french and a couple more nations around so they're going to basically dissolve the coalition by themselves and that's when i attack the genoese likely after my war with the ottomans Excuse me, Gazi Kamuns, did you actually think that you can go across the uh, Black Sea to get to me, sir? That is not acceptable, okay? Also, what the hell, Lithuania? You actually gave them military access, bruh? I thought we're Christian broskis here. Yep, you are still Catholic. What happened here, Lithuania, you backstabbers? Oh, wow, they actually managed to get all the way into Abkhazia. Interesting. Oh, come on, Ottomans. Really? You two managed to get across the uh, Mediterranean here. I mean, the Black Sea. You're not going to be here for too much longer, though. All right, let's see how strong our troopers are compared to theirs. We have an Ein Battalion, 4.4, 4.6. They got a little bit extra discipline compared to me, but overall, still a little bit better than they are. That's probably because we are not fighting too many of them, though, to be fair. And you guys, get out of here. They don't even have a general. What? How come you bastards don't have a general, eh? Alright, I forgot they still have this area, so I gotta take this, make sure they don't have anywhere to retreat, essentially. Hey, we got the offense or defense event. Alright, we're gonna go for siege ability. It is gonna cost us one stability, which sucks massively because of our republican tradition being horrible so getting that one step back is going to be pretty hard but siege ability means we're going to finish this war a lot faster now and it looks like spain just formed so uh <laughs> we're going to have to fight the spanish now to get those islands from them it's not that difficult honestly i prefer to fight one country than two so i kind of prefer that uh, aragon got integrated into the spanish now we're a little bit stricken for manpower so i'm going to be slackening recruitment once to get my manpower pull back up we need to reinforce 43,000. Okay, I'm going to slack in twice in that case to actually fully reinforce my armies here. It's also time to exploit tax development so we can start uh, improving our production and manpower development once more. Oh no, we got attacked whilst we were sieging down Ankara. We're going to lose this. I'm going to be retreating my troopers back to the Balkans until I at least recover all of my manpower for the uh, regiments and then I'm going to attack again. That's the beauty of having all the Balkan lands of the Ottomans to ourselves. We can just regroup here and come back 
back and attack them again whenever we need to. And of course, we're also going to be building the barracks and the rest of the provinces where we can build them in and get to Republican tradition. We're really low on Republican tradition. We got to get that bad boy up as fast as possible. And we're back on the Anatolian side again, this time with more units than before. All right, we managed to take over Halib, which means that uh, we will be able to do our peace deal here. I'm basically going to give the stuff back to my uh, Byzantine vassal as well as I am taking a few other provinces. Maybe I should take some money as well. There you go. I can take 300 ducats. And I think I took all the other islands and everything I'm interested in. So now I have a connection through the Albanian lands and I can start integrating Byzantium. We got Constantinople back as well and we can release Bulgaria from here as well as we are going to be releasing, of course, Syria from here. We're going to do that right now, actually. Avec le Syrioski, which means now we can feed them back all of their cores from the uh, Ottomans in the next war and one core apparently from the Mamluks they still have left. Before I release Bulgaria, I am going to integrate Bosnia. Considering the fact that I'm not planning to attack the Austrians anytime soon, this was just a really bad idea as a vassal, honestly. I don't know what I was thinking. Well, at the time, I actually wanted to attack them, so I guess it's more about molding yourself on whatever RNG you get, essentially. We also can form the nation of Tuscany. However, I'm not going to do it because it doesn't give me any new missions. It doesn't give me any new ideas since I already have Tuscan ideas. So it's literally no point in forming Tuscany. Plus, I like the Florence uh, map color a lot more. The Great Italian War is underway. And honestly, I'm kicking everybody's butts here. Even with the French on their side, <laughs> it's, it's really easy for me to kick everybody's ass. I mean, I got more troops than them. I got better quality troops. And I've already basically sieged down most of my enemies. I'm loving this campaign, not gonna lie. I'm really loving this campaign. Literally, as I just said that, I'm getting my ass kicked by the French now. <laughs> never mind, boys, never mind. Stage one of this campaign is gonna be getting rid of Naples, which is done. And then uh, stage two is getting rid of this stuff in the north here. Even though I'm at war with quite a few nations, I'm also gonna be attacking Provence in a separate war so that I can take the province of uh, Nice from them. Might as well do it now since the French, who is their ally, is already at war with me, so I don't have to fight the French twice this way. Sacre bleu, Paris has fallen very fast. I actually can make them cancel their alliance with Provence and still take a bunch of money. You know what? I really don't mind that. That looks to me like a proper peace deal. Let's do that, and uh, this way we can focus on Provence, and then we can start a small war against the Spanish as well. I also like how Genoa basically sieged down the entirety of Byzantium, but did not bother to actually take any of my lands just yet. And we actually have enough war score to take that one province from uh, Provence. We're gonna do that, cancel some cores, maybe get a little bit of war reps, let's see. Yeah, we can do that. Daria go. That's it from uh, Provence. Don't really want anything except the Italian Peninsula lands. And I know I said before I'm not gonna take Rome, but I changed my mind. I'm taking Rome because I hate the border gore. It just, it looks horrible not having Rome. And I know I'm Catholic, so I'm gonna get the debuff from having taken Rome. It's a-okay, not the end of the world. Small little bit of a Diplo reputation hit, really not massive. What is massive is the papal influence problem here. So we might have to switch on over to Italy at some point if we want to get any papal influence in the future. Of course, we get the event where uh, we choose to release the papal states in the city of Rome if we want to. I'm not going to do that. It's my city. I'll take the one stability hit. That's a-okay. Maybe this is just me, but I feel like 87 aggressive expansion for just four provinces is a little bit of an overkill just saying and now it's time for the coalition of basically Europe to start forming because nobody wants to see a unified Italy clearly that's why oh my god I got 10,000 ducats I need to use this up let's upgrade all of the uh, monuments I guess and we also just got our tertio units here so that means we got really great fire units to fight against the uh, potential coalition also it looks like our Republican tradition is really low and we're gonna go for 20 Republican tradition we lost one stability we also are gonna get the bonfire of the vanities uh, disaster here trigger in one month so we're gonna have to navigate through that disaster so now we get the millenaria theocracy which is a special theocracy available to the uh, Florentines it offers missionary strength tolerance of the true faith and maximum absolutism plus 
40, which is a massive amount. Brother Girolamo Savonarola is uh, the one to be blamed for all this. Now we gotta decide if we want to keep him or if we want to get rid of him. Honestly, not such a bad thing getting that extra absolutism if you want to do a world conquest. And the missionary strength also helps if you have lands in the Balkans and so on like I have right now. Historically speaking, Girolamo here or Girolamo, whatever you want to call him, actually did take charge of uh, Florence and he kicked out the Medici from Florence in the late 1400s. I think 1485, something like that. I might be wrong. But what eventually happened was when the Pope asked him for support against the French, he basically wanted to unify Italy against the French who were really uh, pushing their influence into Italy. Girolamo said no. So the Pope basically excommunicated him and then hanged and burned him eventually and his followers. So uh, that did not end well for him. In game, we have the choice of either following what he tells us and eventually we become a theocracy or we try to go back and um, restore the Medici in control of uh, Florence. I'm gonna bring the Medici back. He has great pips, not gonna lie, 553 and everything, but um, oh, whoa, whoa, ba -ba 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 I'll help out my allies. But yeah, I'm, uh, I'm uh, gonna bring back the Medici, not gonna let Kirolamo do much. If it was a multiplayer game, it would be different. In a multiplayer, he is actually the better choice since theocracies and multiplayers have a few more bonuses, right? Because you get extra morale of armies and so on to help out any wars. But in a single player, it's a lot better just staying as a republic, really. At least Florence. I just realized that things are getting a lot more stable in North Africa with Tunis having half of it whilst the Portuguese have the other half. And Timbuktu got massive as well. And the French are going colonial. So looking forward to see how the uh, French colonial empire is going to be expanding. So eventually the people did turn against uh, Savonarola and... <laughs> They're burning him, boys, and we have restored order in Florence, meaning we can go back to our Italian Signoria here, or noble elite for that matter. Nah, screw that, that's... They're both horrible. They're both absolute horrible, I'll be honest. I wish there was like a special Florence uh, reform that's better than all of those. We also integrated Byzantium and we're making absolute bank with our trade here. We're basically filtering 55% of the Alexandria trade node into uh, our Genoese node directly. So we're getting 40 ducats from this one. We're getting 17 from this. Altogether, 67 ducats just from these two right now. And it's going to go up a lot more the more merchants that we get and that's why I'm also going to be attacking the Mamluks to make trade companies and the Tunisians to make trade companies from North Africa and since I am doing that and I'm going to be expanding a little bit more I guess we could potentially turn this into a Roman Empire run but we'll leave that for the last part you guys let me know if you're interested in seeing it. and you know what you need to do if you want to see it so until the next time check out this awesome Holland video and I want to give a massive thank you to all of my patrons channel members and twitch subscribers I would not be able to do this without all your support. If anybody else would like to also support me, you will find the links in the description.